Good morning, everyone, and welcome to my uh, latest video blog on setbacks. So I want to cover setbacks because, to be honest with you, setbacks is a subject that in all the years that I've been working with anxiety and, and, the, and the years that I suffered from anxiety myself, setbacks was a huge, frightening taboo subject. And it's something that I think I don't know when I kind of look online I see lots of people going right okay setback is a comeback and and all of this without really sort of um trying to empower people without really explaining or considering what what else could be going on um so over the course of the years that that I I did suffer and that I've I've worked with anxiety I think my thoughts and feelings on setbacks and and kind of what they mean has has changed slightly I think from from what it used to be and that's come through um my own experiences listening to others reading um researching looking at everybody so that I can kind of formulate ideas and um as always with me what I try and do is take layers off so I think right okay so that's the belief that's where we're at so if I take a layer off that what's what do I think is really going on there um and so I've done that with 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 setbacks um so if we look at setbacks themselves, I might just refer to some notes I've got here. So if you do see me look down, um, that's why, because I do think it's important to cover um, as much as I can here. But but OK, so let's look at setbacks. If we look at a setback, how I see that is that someone is suffering with anxious feelings and um, they begin to feel like the anxious feelings are subsiding. So they're kind of managing to do things, they're um, feeling better in themselves. And then suddenly it seems like without warning, these the feelings come back. And, and as an anxiety sufferer many years ago myself, one of the things that I used to think was, oh my God, this thing um has come back to get me and I'm really vulnerable to it and what that would do is it would serve to increase my fear of anxiety and if you think about how we how we work with anxiety we do an awful lot of internal monitoring so we're hyper vigilant to the feeling that we've got inside of us and so we Wherever we are, whatever we're doing, we're very aware of how we're feeling. We're monitoring in, internally. So what can happen in a negative sense is that when somebody has a setback, they're even more self-monitoring because it's like this could come out of nowhere. This is so we're frightened of the feeling that we're having. Um, but what I think is really important here is that we're frightened to feel our feelings because we don't trust that we're going to be okay. So we're, we almost don't trust in ourselves. We think I'm not going to handle this and, and I can't get anybody to help me because it's an internal thing. It's, it's kind of what I'm feeling. And that's the thing with anxiety. Um, it's kind of something that even though it seems like we're very similar to other people, i.e. we might feel short of breath, somebody else might feel short of breath, we might have pins and needles, somebody else might have pins and needles. We're kind of not because the reason that we're feeling our feelings is very personal to us um, and our anxiety is formulated on that individuality. So. I think that's the mistake that treating anxiety people make nowadays because they try and treat it as though it's a, an illness and a problem um, rather than looking at somebody as, a, as an individual person and thinking what is what is going on with them, that these surface symptoms have started to formulate within them and then what we're trying to do is, is, is we're trying to sort of cure the surface symptoms but actually if we work out what's really going on for that person those habits and, and those surface symptoms will actually um, disappear. So basically, one of the problems is that we have a setback and we go, oh, my goodness, this thing's come back to get me. I can't escape it. I'm now really, really scared of it. And I'm going to internally monitor, monitor myself even more. And I'm never going to be OK. So we reach that conclusion. And some of that problem is that we see anxiety. I mean, I'm, I'm going to give you some thoughts. And, and these are these are my thoughts, um, you know, and I, I own those thoughts. And, and I kind of 
I'm open, I'm subjective, I'm open to, um, you know, other people's thoughts and feelings too, but but these are mine. And, and I think that individuals having their own thoughts is quite important because that's how we formulate ideas in the world. So just when we think we know something about a subject, somebody will come over and go, oh my God, I'm thinking this. And that gives us a whole new avenue to kind of explore and gain understanding. So people's individual thoughts are quite important. Um, but... I think what happens is we see anxiety as an illness. We see the symptoms that we get physically with anxiety as an illness. So we, if you think about an illness, let's take something like chicken pox. So we know we're going to get a, a, a fever. We know we're going to feel pretty rubbish. We know we're going to get spots that itch and they're really horrible. Probably going to use a couple of bottles of calamine lotion. Um, the spots are going to scab over and then we're going to start to recover. So there's a there's a there's a, almost a process of that illness. And, and, and once we see the spots scabbing over, we're thinking, I'm going to be better shortly. This is it. I'm not infectious anymore. I'm going to be OK. And we've got that assurance. But with anxiety, it's it's not an illness. It's a learned response to an emotion. So a learned reaction to an emotion. Now, there's people that will argue with me with that. And I, and I, and I get that. I, I totally do. Um, and I understand it's under the mental health umbrella and that it's um, treated as a, as, as a mental health condition. Um, but it is a learned response to an emotion. It's a construct. So when you look at it, there isn't a set path like there is with an illness. There isn't, there isn't one. Um, but that belief that there is really affects people that are suffering from it because when they get a setback, they believe that they're helpless or they believe that they're getting worse because they were getting better. So I just got it and now it's it's gone and, and it's all hopeless and I'm never going to recover. And, and I'm here categorically to say that, that that is not correct. That assumption is not, not correct. So this is about looking at how can we look at it? How can we look at um, a setback? Um, and some of this, um, I think for me, is, is about when we look at the, the, the very bottom essence of anxiety it's I'm not going to handle it I'm not going to handle if this goes on in the world I'm not going to handle it if 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 this happens to me I'm not going to handle it if I continue to feel these feelings I'm not going to handle it so some of that comes down to how we believe we are and quite often what's happened to people is that they've had instances in their life probably when they were much younger and, and, if, and there's a lot of, um, gosh, I could go on forever about this, but when you look at children, they're not able to understand emotion, regulate emotion and, um, and put that into a life context. So sometimes, and I'm, I'm certainly not saying everybody's had a difficult childhood or anything like that, but in terms of just feelings, for whatever reason, what we can do is develop um a thought around ourselves that we can't handle a feeling um, and, and we're, we're struggling. And this can be a subconscious thing. So when we get difficult feelings, we look externally to try and fix them. So we might glug a bottle of wine or we might smoke a cigarette or we might ring a friend up or we might um, obsessively clean the house because that takes our mind off something. Or, But really what we're doing is we're avoiding how we're feeling inside because we don't believe that we can handle it so sometimes what a setback is is an opportunity to sit with a feeling to understand that that you can and the only way to do that is to is to actually do it um you know it's a bit like me saying you know see that horse over there i'm gonna i'm gonna jump i'm gonna i'm gonna learn to ride it so well that i ride it at the olympics but i'm gonna sit on this bench i'm not gonna actually get on it and and everybody would look at me and go well how are you going to learn to ride it and ride it at the olympics if you're not going to get on it it's the same with anxiety so it's almost like you know this is it's really important that that you start to develop a belief that you can handle it and the only way to do that is to is to begin to feel it when it when it when it when it rises and it's not a set path so it's it's got to find a level again you've got to find a level so um 
yeah, it, it, it's it's understanding that 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 you'll be okay. I mean, if you think about it, when you're anxious, you're anxious probably 24-7, 365 days a year, if you're anxious for a year. Um, that's a lot of concentration on one thing. So that's almost become how you know how to be. So when we say I want to be better, what we're actually saying is I want to be, you know, I want to find my non-anxious self, but your body's still in anxious self. So it's got to, it's got to find a bit of a, it's got to go into non-anxious self and it'll pull back into anxious self a little bit because it's, it, it's working out how to find that balance again. So it's trusting in that process and trusting in you. And I think that's quite important. So the body will flit a little bit. It's not just a, a set path. Um, I'm hoping all of this makes sense. So the other thing is to make what I think is a, um, a choice that's based on where you'd like to be in the future. So I worked with somebody um, a long time ago. Obviously, I won't share any personal information, but I think it's on the website, this actually. So the person did, did allow me to share a little bit of the story. And it was it was anxiety on, on dual carriageways. And, and the, the person really struggled to get onto a dual carriageway to sit in traffic, to travel far, because there was a sense of, you know, having to wait for a slip road to sort of come off. Um, Anyway, this, this particular person mastered the art of, of dual carriageways. They, they did really, really well. They worked really hard on themselves. And they um, they were able to travel. They were able to sit on in traffic. They were able to pretty much get back to how they how they needed to be. And, um, and then one day, while they were on the dual carriageway, they had a panic attack. And it was like, oh, my God, that's it. It's I, I just got to that level. I got so well. Everything was brilliant. And look what happened. Um, what's the point? What's the point in this? There's no point. At that point, though, that person had a, a choice and it's a really uncomfortable choice. I'm really not minimizing anxious feelings because I you know, have have been there in terms of I do know what it's like to be very anxious. Um, but the choice they had was right. OK, so I can I can begin to start the avoiding process. I can begin to um, engage in the behaviours that I felt protected me from this anxiety so I can stay at home, not get on the dual carriageway, only go one junction, you know, start to put things in place that's going to protect me. But if you think about it, what they're doing is they're protecting themselves from the feeling. It's not the dual carriageway. It's what the feeling inside so the other choice they have at that point is to, OK, acknowledge that there's a bit of a setback going on. You don't like it. You don't want it to happen. You don't want to be in this position. You know, acknowledge that. But you can make a choice to get back on the dual carriageway. And that is what this person did. They, they got back on the dual carriageway and within days they were they were back to full fettle on the on the on the dual carriageway. The other option would have been that they'd begun to engage and snowballed backwards. Um, so it was quite important for them to see that if they made a different choice, they did have a different outcome. Yes, it was difficult. Yes, they felt fear. But ultimately, they stayed on track to where they wanted to be. So that's one story. Um, and it's really interesting because um, years and years ago, um, Oh, gosh, a long, long time ago, I can remember feeling really, really anxious. And that particular morning, I'd not I'd not I'd not washed up or anything. And I was talking to one of my parents and I said, oh, my God, I said, this is just so bad. I said, I can't even do the washing up. And the parent responded with a sentence that went something like, well, you know, the washing up's not going to sit there forever, is it? It's not. It'll get done at some point. And I don't think they realised how much they helped me that day. And, and it, it wasn't done with any, to my knowledge, any knowledge of them ever suffering from anxiety. But what they told me was this is not a set process. This is not, you know, if that washing up had stayed in the bowl, I'm not going to go my whole life and never do it again. It's going to be OK. It's going to get better. I've just got to work out how to work with it. And, and they were quite right, the washing up didn't sit there. But that particular day, it felt like I was never going to be able to do it again. So a setback is something that is quite important that we just shift perspective and not think, oh, God, that's it, it's come back. Um, 
you know, this is a learned response to an emotion and we've got a lot of control and a lot of empowerment within a setback. We can work on ourselves. So it takes a bit of courage. Um, and also just have a reflect on seeing anxiety as an illness, seeing this in the way in which we think it's it fits into a nice little neat box. I start to feel better. I go out again, I do things. It doesn't come back. Um, and if we have that rigid belief, we're, we're worried by a setback. But that's, in my experience, that's not what a setback is. It's about understanding, learning to trust self. It's about looking at where you want to be and, and, and however hard they are, just shifting your choice a little bit. What do I do? How do I respond to this? Let me just take a second to, to think about this. Um, and working with it in just a slightly different way. As with all anxiety, a lot of the time it's it's how we believe it to be and how we believe recovery to be and, and how we engage with people that, that have beliefs about how recovery is and, and we or we hear something scary in somebody else's story and we respond to that. So it's 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 not all how it is. It's this is quite important. So it's not to fear, it's about your process and learning to trust yourself that you can feel something negative and you can handle it um do you know what if you did nothing during a panic attack you did nothing you just laid on the floor it would pass it would pass on its own it wouldn't need you to do anything um so just something for you to think about and um i'll be back very shortly with another vlog post on um I want to talk about sleep and waking up anxious. So I will look forward to engaging with you then. Thank you.